just want to continue on in our teaching series about metrome, which is basically just kind of this idea of a measurement or the zone or the space of influence and the circles of influence that God has given us. Um, and really, when we're moving into those spots, those beautiful works that God has for us, it's really just that sweet spot, you know, where you know that you fit, you know that you belong, you know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and that's a good place to be. You know, it's not always the, you know, it doesn't mean that you're without problems, but it does mean that it is a good spot because God has placed you there, and you know that God has placed you there, and you can move in confidence in that place that God has put you in that metro that God has placed you within. Now Paul speaks about his metro as being a field, a zone where God has put him into. And uh, maybe you've uh, prayed through the, the previous teachings of, you know, asking the Lord, you know, what is the space? What are you shaping me for? What is the beautiful works that you call me to? And there's a lot of metrons that are just natural. For example, if you're married, your spouse is part of your metron. If you have kids, your family is part of your metron. If you're a worker, your employer and the colleagues and coworkers, the place of employment is your metron. Uh, maybe your metron is things that you possess. You know, uh, maybe your metron is your finances. It could be all sorts of things, things that you have power, influence, and control over, and that God wants to use you to use those things and bless those things and cultivate those things for his glory. And it's important that you know and you recognize what those things are. And sometimes like, you know, like I just mentioned, some of them are just basic things, but it's good to just remind yourself that, you know, God has actually appointed this person for me. You know, God has given you your husband or your wife. God has given you those children. God has put you in a particular church or particular country or city or neighborhood for a reason. He wants you to be an influencer there. He wants you to be using that metro for his glory to produce beautiful, wonderful things. And it's not by accident. He's prepared those things in advance. And it's good if we know what those things are and that we stay within those things and we focus within those things and we just hand those things over daily to Jesus and let him just take over those things and that he would work through you by his spirit to bring the changes and the beautiful works that he wants to do. Another way that Paul describes it is in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 he says, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us keep in pace or rhythm or tandem with the Spirit of God. And you know, we need to be doing that constantly as we're in our metrons, in our spheres of influence, that we would just say, Spirit, what are you doing today? Where do you want to go? How do you want to impact and influence and just embrace the people and the situations and the resources that we have under our control within our metron? And you know, when you're moving with the Spirit, it doesn't mean that you're going to have zero problems. You are going to have problems. You are going to have challenges. You're going to have rough days. But you know that you're with the Spirit of the living God. And the living God has this vast, wonderful heart towards you. And you're convinced and you're moving in that, knowing that whatever people and places and things that He's put in your control within your zone, those things are meant for your good. Those things are meant to produce good in you and to produce good through you. Sometimes, if we're honest, we're not always happy about where we find ourselves, right? Who, and who we find ourselves to be at times. We're not happy with the metrons that we're operating in. And there's a few reasons for that, why we're dissatisfied in the metrons, in the spheres that we find ourselves in. And maybe the first one is that we're in the wrong spheres. We're in the wrong metrons, you know? The reality is that we many times operate in spheres of influence and in metrons that God has not placed us in, fields that God has not placed us in, and they really come out of expectations. Sometimes they're expectations of others, sometimes they're expectations that we put upon ourselves, sometimes they're just expectations that our culture or the situation place upon us, circumstances place on us, and they're not necessarily God-given metrons, God-given pressures, God-given expectations, right? And so there's that battle of 
determining, am I in the space that God wants me to be? Am I doing the things that God wants me to do? Am I the person God wants me to be? Am I operating in that place of beauty that he's called me to? First reason for frustration. And a second reason is the degrees in which we engage in our God-given metrons. So for example, maybe God has called you to be in marriage, he's called you to have a job, okay? That's that's a lot of us, okay? And maybe you are focusing a lot on your work. You're moving up the career ladder, you spend lots of time at work, you spend a lot of your mental energy and your spiritual energy and just everything on your job, but you're neglecting your family. You know, though that is imbalance of your metrone, right? And when you're in that in that imbalance, you're gonna be frustrated, you, your spouse is gonna be frustrated, your kids are not gonna be happy. You know, it's kinda caused disruption because you're not fully focused onto the right balance and degrees of that metron that God has called you to. So kind of doing too little within your metron. And the other extreme, and I think this is where a lot of us go, is just doing too much. Just kind of moving out of our metron into other metrons. Going you know, beyond what God wants us to do. Getting out of step with the Spirit. And that comes many times just out of pride and ambition and just desire and sometimes uh, value because we place so much value in our culture to what we do right and what we do somehow equates to who we are and you know that is not God's measurement for you God loves you and he has placed you and he's forming you for beautiful things and he is happy when you are in that space that he's prepared for you you don't need to be something other than he's created you to be and the result of when we try to move out of our metro and try to aspire to what we think is better or bigger is that we end up getting burnt out and resentful and bitter and strife happens, you know, and none of those things are good. None of those things are producing beautiful fruit of the spirit in your life. And then the last thing, kind of last problem of being within our metrons is sometimes we are in the place exactly where God wants us to be. We're in the city, we're in the neighborhood, we're in the work, we're in the ministry, we're in the right relationship, but for whatever reason, we're not satisfied in it. We're not satisfied in it. And sometimes we're doubting that God has brought us there and that he wants to put good things in us and he wants to do good things through us and we're unsatisfied in those metrons. And when we're not satisfied, we're not really making that impact that he wants us to make. We're second guessing and we're not convinced that he is loving us and he's putting us there for a reason. And once again, you have discontentment, you have bitterness, you have strife, you have doubts, and you really just kind of lose the drive to do what he wants you to do. <clears throat> and I just want to encourage you, if you feel like your metron is just kind of too small, you're like, I don't really see how I'm going to make an impact. You know, I'm just a husband, I'm just a wife, I'm just a worker, you know, I'm just a parent. And you know, sometimes we, we see these normal daily living things as not that important. And you know what? In God's eyes, they're extremely important. They're extremely important. And Paul, the apostle, will talk about it, his own ministry. He says, you know, God has given me this, he's speaking to the church in Corinth. He says, God has given me this field and you guys are part of this zone. You're part of this field of my influence. And he says, I pray that you will grow in the faith. And as you grow to maturity, our ministry will grow as well. And I just think that's a great principle. You know, as we, for example, as I, as a husband, as I sow into Ivetka, and as I sow into my boys, and as I, a pastor, as I sow into you guys as a as church family, and as you guys grow in your God-given gifts, in your God-given metrons, and your God-given ministries, you know, I also grow. You know, it's like throwing the rock into the pond and seeing the ripples go out, you know. But you have to throw the rock. You have to put that investment and you have to take that step forward into the things that God wants you to get put forward. And 
Do that. Invest in your children. Invest in your spouse. Invest in your friends. Invest in the people at church. Invest in those around you in your neighborhood. And as they grow, as you sow into them, your ministry will grow. Your influence will grow. Your life will grow. And lastly, maybe you're hearing all this and you're like, you know, I am not satisfied where I'm at. I'm not satisfied with who I am. I'm not satisfied with the um, zone that God has given me, the metron that God has given me. Uh, you just have this struggle in your heart. Um, and you're not feeling that it's good. You're not feeling that it's beautiful. In fact, maybe you're feeling worn out. Maybe you're feeling burdened. Guess what, guys? There is a place for you. And there's a good place for you. I just want to encourage you. I just want to read this, some scriptures to you. Jesus was speaking to people who were weary, who were burdened, who had expectations that they could not meet, bills that they could not pay, uh, pressures they could not handle. And he says this in Matthew chapter 11. It says, Come to me, all who are weary, all who are burdened, and I'm going to give you some rest. I'm going to give you shalom. <clears throat> Take on my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble at heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And those are just encouraging words from Jesus, you know. Come, if you're weary, you're burdened, come to Him. Come to Him. He will take those expectations that others are putting on you, that you're putting on you. He'll take that strife. He'll take those burdens. He'll take that weariness of you not being able to keep up. He'll take all those things and he'll want to put his arm around you and just put you in the shadow of his wing, put you under his yoke. His yoke for you, his measuring out for you, his metrone for you is perfect. It's unique. It's set up just for you. So don't fight it go with it move with it and know that you're not doing it alone he you are yoked to Jesus you are going together you're moving forward in this great a journey together so do that this week you know seek him just ask him hey Lord I need you I feel burdened I feel like I'm not satisfied in the places that I'm at and just allow him to transform your perspective transform your heart to remind you of his love for you and the beautiful things he has in store for you. So be blessed and be a blessing. Take care, guys. Strap.